my name is Kara and this is Lonnie and today we are going to make a dog sweater. So I am making this tutorial instead of writing a written pattern because I find that dogs come in a lot of different shapes and sizes depending on the breed, depending on your dog's like chest, even within the same breed there's a lot of like variations so I thought that people would want a dog sweater that fit their own dog it's actually great for getting rid of scraps. His dogs don't need as much material to cover their bodies as humans do. They don't need sleeves, they just need like the body. And it's kind of fun if you can make a sweater to match yourself and your dog together and just walk around. Some dogs need sweaters more than others. Lani is a Shetland Sheepdog, so she doesn't actually need that much winter coverage, but you know, everybody needs a dog sweater just for fun. And it's really cold in New York right now, so I thought it'd be perfect. Full disclosure, I've only made about two to three dog sweaters before, and this is the first time I've tried to like formalize it. So I've done my best here, and hopefully it'll fit your dog. Again, Lottie doesn't really need a sweater, but you know, we're gonna try. We don't quite both fit on this chair, but I'll let her down in a second. So what you are going to need is a tape measure, a dog as a model, hopefully, it's definitely easier to have the dog with you so that you can try it on as you go and that's like the main thing you want to do for this pattern you want to try things on as you make it so that way you can customize it to your dog and their fur and everything also dogs like change a lot on their shape based on grooming um, she gets a lot fluffier in between groomings she is definitely on the fluffier side right now and i'll do like a full like show of her right before so you'll need a dog as a model. If you're making this as a gift, do your best. Maybe find a dog that's similar in shape or just guess. I'll give you Lonnie's measurements. It'll definitely change depending on the breed and the fluffiness and everything. I like to describe her as medium, so small medium. She's about 25 pounds, but the fur makes her look maybe about 30 just because she is so fluffy. You can't tell right now, but she's kind of barely in shot. So yes, you'll need a dog as a model. You don't need it, but it definitely helps making the sweater. You'll need needles and yarn. So I can't give you the yardage as well. I am making it up as I go. I made a dog sweater that took about one and a half skeins. So about like 120 meters for a dog that was about 17 pounds. And she's also really fluffy. Today I'm gonna to be using bulky yarn and eight millimeter needles. I'm gonna be using Oh, just knocked everything over. I'm going to be using Lamb's Pride Bulky, and this is about 113 grams for 114 meters, so about one gram per meter. And it is considered bulky. It's probably a lighter weight bulky, I find, that it kind of doesn't... It's not as thick as other bulky yarns that I've used, but I thought it would look really pretty with her fur here. And I'm also going to be using the appropriate needles for this, so 8 millimeter needles. The way that I've written this pattern though, it doesn't really matter what yarn or needles you use because it's going to be based more on gauge, the inches, and the measurements of your dog. This is Leilani. She is a Shetland Sheepdog. She's technically a cryptic merle, um, so she looks more like tricolor on one side and merle on one. She's really fluffy. She's kind of hot because we just got in from a walk and it's really wintry. It's like 20 degrees outside, but probably about like 60 to 70 in my apartment. So she's cooling down. Um, yeah, and she is ready to be our model today. She often gets mistaken as a corgi because she's a little bit short, but she's so fluffy that she looks a lot shorter than she is. Yeah. So you're going to want to measure your dog's chest and like their neck. Lani is particularly fluffy here. So first I'm just going to measure loosely with my tape measure. And it's about 21 inches, but because she's so fluffy, I'm actually going to take a few inches off, and I think I'm going to do about 18 inches. I don't want to make it too tight, though, because it's going to look ridiculous with all of her fluff. A dog this fluffy probably doesn't really look like the neatest sweater. She honestly probably doesn't because she has the double coat, so she's really well insulated. But it's going to be fun to make her a sweater. She's going to be so pretty. She's such a good model. So we're gonna use about 18 inches as her neck measurement. So now we're gonna figure out gauge. Again, we don't have to worry about what needles and yarn we're using as long as the needles are appropriate for the yarn weight that you're using. So again, I'm using eight millimeters, which is perfectly fine for a bulky weight yarn. So I'm gonna take my gauge. I'm not actually gonna need a gauge swatch because I've used this yarn a ton and I know that my gauge is about, so you're gonna need the number of stitches that it takes you to make an inch. 
So that's about four for me, and I'm just gonna use that number throughout making the sweater. So you're gonna wanna take the, your tape measure and take the measurement of your dog's collar. And this is gonna be how many stitches you cast on. I'm just gonna be using the eight millimeter throughout this entire sweater. You could also use a smaller needle when you're doing your ribbing, just because that's more normal and what we're used to when making human sweaters. And I'm feeling a little bit lazy and I'm just gonna use eight millimeters throughout because I just feel like it. And I am gonna cast on 18 times four. What is that number? Two times four, eight, 72. I think it's 72. I'm gonna cast on 72 stitches. And I'm trying to, <sighs> I can never get the right. Hold on, I'm gonna have to find the middle of this yarn. I'm going to long tail cast on my 72 stitches. And if you're wondering how you can do a long tail cast on, I have a ton of other videos to show you how to do all these techniques. So really all you need today is long tail cast on, increases, decreases, working in stockinette in the round, working flat. There's a few things that I could show you how to do it. Um, I'm probably not going to do that today just because I have a few other videos on it and I'm trying to like kind of speed finish the sweater because I have to return Bonnie to my sister this evening and there's only so many hours of daylight. So sorry if this is incomplete. Essentially, you should be able to make a sweater for your dog if you know the basics of making a sweater. You can also completely ignore me when I say to do stockinette. You can do your own pattern to match your sweater, whatever you want. I'm just doing stockinette here as like a fill-in. You can do whatever you want. The idea of trying to grade a dog sweater with like a textured pattern is so horrifying to me that I'm just doing stockinette because it's easiest and yeah, I know my gauge in stockinette pretty easy. So two, four, six, eight. Once I've cast it on all my stitches, I am going to join in the round and make sure that my stitches aren't twisted. And remember, you did a long tail cast on. The reason we do a long tail cast on is because you want a stretchy edge to make sure that the sweater can go over your dog's head. Dog's heads are a lot smaller than human heads, but it doesn't hurt to do a long tail cast on. I'm then gonna take a stitch marker and place it at the beginning of the round. Oh my god, I dropped it. <laughs> place it at the beginning of the round, and then I'm going to do my ribbing. I'm gonna do one by one ribbing here. We can always do two by two. You can even do twisted rib if you want, if you, your dog to be very fancy. Maybe I'll do two by two actually. No, I'll do two by two ribbing just to make it a little more interesting. I'm gonna do two by two ribbing here and I'm going to knit the collar of the sweater. Once you start knitting and ribbing, you're gonna do that for a few inches, kind of depending on the length of your dog's collar or their neck. And I really do recommend just trying it on your dog as you go to see how long you want it. I think you can make it as long as you want. You can give them a little turtleneck as long as you don't overshoot the tops of their shoulders. So just keep on trying it on your dog and just seeing how it fits. So one thing to note here is that if you are gonna do two by two ribbing or like even four by four ribbing or whatever, make sure that your stitch count is divisible by four or eight. I realized that I left out with the 72 stitches being divisible by four, but I didn't show you that I did the math because I didn't, I lucked out. I just decided to do two by two ribbing to make it prettier for Lonnie and <laughs> I left out. If you have longer cord length for your needles, I do recommend to use like a longer one, like a 32 inch one, just to make it easier for you to try it on your dog as you go. Um, it might be annoying to have like a really long cord in between. You could always switch back and forth between like a shorter cord needle length and a longer cord needle length, but I'm pretty comfortable with the magic loop method, so I'm just gonna use that. And that way it's a lot easier to just try it on your dog as you go, or cat. You could also use this pattern for cats, although I've never done that before. And like this will be pretty easy to slip over Lonnie's head just to make sure that it fits. Okay, time for the try on. We have our neck ribbing here, and we have our little supermodel here. And we're just gonna make sure that it fits over her and doesn't look too ridiculous. Okay, looks good. Huh. It looks a little funny because you're such a fluffy girl, but you're a good little model. Like right now it's just kind of lost in her fluff, but I know that the tops of her shoulders are like here-ish from where it's sitting right now from like this is where her collar is. So that's about mm, four more inches that I can work with, but I don't want it all to be ribbing. I think I'm gonna be do about two to three inches of the ribbing and then just switch to stockinette. So I'm just gonna keep on knitting here. I know you're a little nervous. She doesn't like sitting on furniture, but I thought that it'd be better for you guys to see her this way. As I'm doing this, I'm realizing that I definitely could have stood to make this smaller, like a little bit tighter to Lonnie's collar, but that's okay. I mean, she's so fluffy that I can kind of get away with 
a lot. Um, if you have a skinnier dog or like a more short haired dog, I would recommend going closer. That way it doesn't like gape at the neck as much. Like a loose measurement of the collar is good, but don't make it too loose. Fortunately for me, Lonnie does a pretty forgiving fur, and if I made it too tight, it would just kind of look ridiculous. Like, she'd look like too, like shoved in a tube, even like if it was comfortable on her, like it just would look too tight on her. So that's kind of the balance of, you wanna make sure that it's not too tight on your pet, especially because they can't really tell you. They'll certainly tell you by like trying to rip it off or just like not moving when they try it on. I personally love seeing dogs in sweaters, especially in New York, because it's so cold, so it seems like all the dogs need them. I'm not sure if Lonnie needs one in New York, even if it is like 20 degrees because she does have that double coat. She's so fluffy. We've like never really seen her shiver, even when like walking out in the snow. She doesn't love the snow, don't get me wrong. Like she refused to like pee and poop a little bit when the first time we brought her out to snow, but she's getting used to it. But I do love dog sweaters and I wish that I knew more dogs in my life that I can make sweaters for because uh, my family only has Shetland Sheepdogs and it looks a little bit ridiculous when you put sweaters on them because they're so fluffy. We also have one, Ollie, and he is very destructive to the point where if we made a sweater for him, he would destroy it. If we made a sweater for the other dogs, he would also destroy it because they just play kind of rough and they just love messing with each other. So sweaters... Not such a good idea, especially when they're handmade, and I would be kind of upset if Ollie destroyed it. And not that it takes me long to make them, but I I still don't want to see like one of my knit objects destroyed by my beloved dog. So I haven't made as many dog sweaters as I would have liked to. The next measurement we are going to take is right below the shoulders, kind of where like a harness sits. And this is just going to be like the widest part of their chest. And this will vary a lot by the dogs. Like Ollie has a much wider chest than Lonnie, even though they're the same breed. I'll show a picture of Ollie. You can tell by the way that they stand that Ollie has like a really big chest. So here we have a measurement of about 24 and a half inches. So I'm gonna round that up to 25. So this is the number that we are going to increase the body to. So we have the number of stitches that we have is stockinette. And we're just still gonna continue, but we are going to eventually widen the sweater so that it fits the dog chest. I think she's getting comfortable up here. She's a good girl. She's just a big ball of fluff. Okay, so now we have about two to three inches of ribbing, and I'm gonna do just about another inch of just plain stockinette. Um, I could start the body increases, so maybe I'll only do like half an inch before I do the increases for the body. You know, it's kind of fast and loose with this pattern, and I'm just going to keep on trying it on Lonnie. So now that we've just shoe our pattern for the body, which is stockinette, we are going to start thinking about our increases. So our, it's going to be a lot like a raglan sweater, where you're going to do an increase row, a plain stockinette row, or plain pattern row, and then alternate that between increase row, plain row, increase row, plain row. We do this so that the increases are a little bit more gradual, so it's not so stark. Um, if you did increases every row, it would be very obvious instead of like a nice slope. That's perfectly fine, but generally with like a dog sweater, you wanted to make things a little more gradual so that it looks good and it's like shaped to their body. So now I've done one row stuck in it. And I've realized that we are going to have to increase quite a bit for Lonnie's body because if we're going from about 18 inches at her collar and we are going to go to 25, maybe... We'll just decrease that to 24. She did measure loosely at 24 and a half inches, um, but I think I'll just increase by 28 stitches. The way I got that number is I did 25 to 18 inches, and that is about seven inches. Seven times four, which is my gauge number, is 28 stitches. So all in all, that means that we are going to have to do 28 rows of increases and that means increase row pattern or plain row increase row plain row way that I am going to be increasing by two stitches every row and I realized that you could also increase more quickly like you can put midway markers through the sweater like if you treated this like the way that I'm treating this is this is the chest part so it's going to go in between her chest and the little armholes are going to be on either side. You could also place stitch markers so that it goes on either on the sides of the body so that you can go increase by four every round. If you increase by four that means that you have to do 
I do 28, that means seven rows. You only have to do four rows, sorry, 14 rows of increases. That might be smarter depending on how thick your yarn is. That way increases happen more quickly. Um, like if you're working with a super bulky yarn, you don't want to be doing increases over 28 rows just because by the time you're done, like the sweater is going to be like basically over and you're going to completely overshoot the armholes. I just realized that I messed up my gauge number. I don't actually mind my gauge. My gauge actually tends to be about two and a half stitches per inch. I did four. I might not do as many increases now. Um, so 25 times two and a half is 50 plus 12 and a half, so it's 62 and a half. Okay, so I should only be at 62 and a half stitches for her chest. If you've been following this video, I'm so sorry. I messed up my gauge. This happens. This is a real time mistake. I could go back and refilm everything, but we're kind of losing daylight. Um, so here's what I'm going to omit from the pattern because I overshot it. I cast it on too many stitches. We are at 72 stitches. The width of Lonnie's chest basically makes it so that I should have had about, I think 62 and a half stitches for her full body. I'm going to omit the increases then here and I'm just going to write out the instructions of what I would have done. Fortunately for me, Lonnie is very fluffy, so her collar fluff and like her mane were going to make it so that it doesn't look like I made the neckline really like way too big for her. This might be different for your dog. I'm really sorry. <laughs> this happens. Spread out the increases from the neckline to the body over what I just described before. So in theory, again, like let's say my needles are smaller, my yarn is smaller, so that my gauge actually was four stitches per inch. If I wanted to go from 72 stitches to, which represented Lonnie's 18 inches for her collar, to the 25 inches for her body, which is about 100 stitches, so I still need to increase 28 stitches, I'd still spread that out over 14 or 28 rows. 14 if I wanted to do four increases per row, 28 rows if I want to do two increases per row. And that, again, just depends on what yarn you're using. If you're using like a really thin yarn for your dog sweater, I would recommend doing the 28 rows, kind of depending on your gauge lengthwise. I would calculate to see how many inches that is over. If it's about six inches, that might be too much. If it's only about like three to four, I would do, that's totally fine. Realistically, if it's that dramatic of an increase, about seven inches, which might have been very generous, I would probably do four increases per row, just to make sure that it doesn't get too long to the point where like the neckline is too big for your dog. So I'm just gonna keep on knitting here until I reach about four to six inches. Mm, let's say about five inches for Lonnie. And then I'm gonna shape the armholes. I always remember my gauge is like for on eight millimeter needles as 10 stitches by 16 rows. I just mixed up which one was rows and which one was like width. That's okay. Uh, you live and you learn. So now we are just going to be knitting to the tops of her shoulders, which is about, let's just say it's about five inches. Okay, we have now reached about five inches. We're gonna do a try on here. Thank you for being such a good model. So try it on Lonnie. This is pretty good. Um, we are now going to start the little armholes. So, <laughs> Lonnie's chest is, let's see how big her arms are apart. It's about four-ish inches apart. Maybe we'll do four and a half just to keep it loose. Mm, let's do four. And then we'll make the armholes a little bit bigger. So Lonnie's arms are about two-ish inches. I think that a two-inch gap would be good. So two times two and a half because that's actually our gauge. So that's five stitches. So we are going to do about a five-stitch cast on on either side, about four inches apart, to make her little armholes. But Kara, how are we going to do that? So we are going to treat the beginning of the round as the middle of her chest. We're going to half the armhole wing width. The length of that we are going to keep the arm holes apart, paw holes maybe. So that's four inches. We're going to take two inches of that. We're going to have it. And we're going to do two times two and a half. So that's five. So it'll be five stitches. So we're going to knit five stitches at the beginning of the round, cast off five stitches again, knit until we have 10 stitches, cast off five, knit five. Then the middle piece will continue to add to, we're going to lengthen the middle piece and then we're going to separately then knit the 
other side for about two inches, say, and then we're going to join them back in the round. And that's how we're going to make our little armholes or our paw holes. Yeah, and Lonnie seems to be liking her sweater so far. I'm a little concerned that because we made it so big, we're going to run out of yarn, but we'll see how it goes. So that's our game plan for how to make the armholes. Again, the math that I did was I measured the width that her legs are apart. That was about four inches. I measured her little paws. That was about, at about two inches each. So we're going to cast off two inches for each of the paws, arms. I should figure out how to say that. So we have four inches in between, two inches on each side. We're going to knit five, cast off five, knit until we only have 10 stitches left, cast off five, knit five. Then we have the middle piece, which will be the piece that goes in between her little legs. Then we'll knit the rest. And I think it'll make more sense once I actually start knitting it. I'm actually just knitting on the floor with Lonnie. I've already cast off the middle part. So I knit five, cast off five, and now I'm just knitting until I have 10 stitches left. And then I will show you guys what I mean by knitting the middle piece versus the rest of the body. So I have two, four, six, eight. I have 10 stitches left. So I'm just start casting off one. Where are you going? Two, three, four, five. Okay, so now I have five stitches left from for the stitch mark. So I have 10 stitches total for my middle piece. And because my yarn is already attached to the middle, I'm just going to continue to work it. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see. But if you hold it like this, you can start to see it. You have the paw hole, paw hole, middle piece. So now I'm going to work this middle piece in flat stockinette, and I'm going to work it until it's about two inches long. And the reason why it's two inches long is just so that I can give her armholes like plenty of room for movement. Um, maybe I'll make it even three. I'll probably do three actually, just to make it kind of loose, but just so that she doesn't feel any friction when she's walking especially because she's so fluffy. And I would say that I would be more generous with this measurement just because you don't want it to be too tight so your dog doesn't actually move in the sweater. So I'm actually gonna measure her little armpits here. Yeah, that's about three inches. So maybe I'll do three and a half just to make it be safe. I'll do three and a half inches of flat stock in it for this piece. So now my middle portion is about three and a half inches long and I'm actually just going to cut the yarn And we are going to just like slip that onto the right side of the needle. We don't need that. You can also place it on a separate set of needles as well. I've just decided to keep on knitting on the floor because Lonnie seems pretty comfortable on the chair. And I don't want to keep on moving her on and off the chair because it's exhausting being a model like this. <laughs> Anyways, then I am going to reattach my yarn to the stitches that we left on hold and I am just going to knit them in stockinette flat for three and a half inches so that it matches the little middle piece as well. So this is going to be a lot of knitting flat. I try to avoid knitting flat as much as I can but in this case you can't really knit this portion in the round. Believe me I've tried to think about it but yeah you're just going to have to knit a few inches in stockinette and flat. But it's the price that we pay for making sweaters for our dogs. Okay, now we have the body and the middle part are about equal. Sorry for the sounds of New York. So you can see paw hole, middle, paw hole. We are now going to reattach the middle part to the rest of the body. And we're going to do that by doing a backwards loop cast on. I think that's what it's called. Let's, let's double check that. Yes, backwards loop cast on. So we have our yarn at the beginning of this portion of the body. So we are now going to knit. So we have the, we're right after the first paw hole and we're just going to actually knit the entire body. And then we're gonna do our backwards loop cast on for the left paw. When the dog or cat or animal is wearing this, it will be the left paw hole. Arm hole. Paw hole. I like paw hole. It's kind of cute because that way it makes it clear that you're knitting a sweater not for yourself but for your dog or your cat or your lizard or bunny. So I am knitting to the first paw hole and if you recall I casted off five stitches for the 
plot hole and now I have to add those back on. So I'm going to use the backwards loop method. So I'm just going to take my thumb and I'm going to place it on the yarn and just loop it around. So I've just created a loop and I'm just going to place that gently on my needle. And that's just how you do a cast on. It kind of makes it sometimes tight if you do it too tight, but this is just a really easy way to cast on new stitches and just replace the ones that you cast it off for the armholes. And this is actually how I do buttonholes as well. So I've done one, two, three, four, five. Once I've casted on those new stitches, I'm just gonna knit the stitches for the middle. Whoops, just almost dropped it. <laughs> And then keep going. So I'm going to knit the stitches for the middle. That was the 10 stitches in the middle. And I'm going to place my stitch marker beginning of round marker again. Where did I put that? I threw that somewhere. Here it is. Just so that I can have the beginning of the round again. And then knit those last five of the middle. And then I'm going to do the backwards loop method again. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And then continue to knit the rest of the stitches of the body. And then I'm just going to continue to add length to my doggy sweater or animal sweater. But I keep on calling it dog sweater just because Lonnie's the dog that I'm making this for. And I'm going to add about three inches of length before I start to cast off for their tummy so that way they don't accidentally pee on it when they wear it on their walks outside when it's freezing cold. I'm just going to knit and stock a net. And when I get to the backwards loop cast it on stitches, you're just gonna knit those gently. Make sure you don't pull too tightly because then it makes it really difficult to knit the rest of them because if you think about it, they're all kind of like on a loop. So if you pull the first one really tight, then you lose the slack for the rest of the stitches. So. It's tricky the first time, but then after the first time you knit them, it's easier. Okay, so now I've gotten to it. So you can see that there's a bunch of slack here in between the stitch. And you just want to make sure you don't pull it too tight, because otherwise it'll make it more difficult for you later. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and easy. So that's the paw hole. It looks really big. Um, it might have been too big. I might have been too generous. I sh probably should have only done three inches for the length of the paw hole, but you know, better too big than too small because I really want Lonnie to wear this sweater because it's cold. Again, I don't think she needs it, but I want her to be able to wear this sweater. It's her Christmas gift. It's very delayed, but it's her Christmas gift. <laughs> yeah, I am now just going to add about three inches of length from the paw holes and then I'm going to show you guys how to shape the bottom of the sweater. <laughs> I've been giving Lonnie blueberries to reward her for her modeling and that's what she is chewing in case you caught that. So now we've done about three inches from the armhole cast off, cast on I guess, and now we're doing a try on. So the reason why I did three inches is just because that felt right and I didn't want it to be too short, otherwise it would roll after we cast off for the tummy area. And the reason we are going, we're just going to verify that now by having Lonnie try it on. Just want to be careful that we don't drop any stitches. This is where it gets a little tighter. Oh, 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 sorry. Because her chest is bigger. Okay, that's looking pretty good, huh, on. I think we are ready to start casting off for the tummy. So this seems long enough. It seems, wow, Lonnie, you look cute. Um, yeah, we're just going to cast off the middle portion here. And so that way she doesn't accidentally pee on it when she goes to the bathroom. And then we're going to cast off the middle, but we're going to taper the rest so that it's not so like cast off the rest is long so that way it doesn't roll as much so we're going to do decreases on the sides so that way it tapers yeah but this is fitting her pretty well i think i'm going to measure that portion that's not helpful i guess i should use my measuring tape that i do have to figure out how many stitches to cast off for the tummy you're such a good girl okay we're going to cast off about nine and a half inches 
let's round that up to 10 to make my math easier. So we're going to cast off the middle 25 stitches for her tummy area. Dropped a bunch of stitches while taking it off Lonnie. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> From now on, it'll also be easier to have her try it on because there will just be less stitches on the needles after we cast off for the tummy. I keep on saying tummy. It's really more of like her like womb area, I guess. Her crotch area. It's not quite the crotch. I guess it is the crotch. I just want to say tummy instead of crotch. <laughs> so this is the beginning of our round. I took off the stitch marker. We're going to... Let's see. What's the best way to do this? I actually think that it's best for us to, because if we cast off at the beginning and we cast off at the end, we have to reattach our yarn. I think it's actually best to knit until we have about 13 stitches. Let's actually just cast off 24 to make it even. So it's 12 stitches on the other side. So we have, we're gonna cast off 24 stitches. We are going to knit until we have 12 stitches left. Then we are just going to cast off 12 and then move the stitch marker cast off another 12 and then we are still attached to the beginning of the round so Knit until there are 12 stitches left in the row. I have 12 stitches left in the row and now I'm going to cast those stitches off And then once I get to the beginning of the round marker I can move that and can cast off another 12 stitches and then my yarn should be attached to the beginning of the next row. And from now on, we're going to be knitting flat. And then I will show you guys how I do the decreases. Okay, so we've cast off the middle and now we're just going to start tapering the rest of the body. So again, we want the body to taper in that way so it's not so stark when we cast off. I mean, really, realistically, the only reason I'm doing this is just because that's what it looks like in other dog sweaters. It makes sense because you want to cover their like most of their hind legs. So we are just going to do decreases every other row. Where we're gonna we're gonna decrease by two stitches every decrease row. And the way we're gonna do that is we are going to knit two, slip slip knit, decrease, so a left leaning decrease, knit until we have four stitches left, knit two together, knit two. I have one stitch knit already, knit another one. S, S, K, so slip, slip, knit. Slip two stitches knit-wise, then knit them together. That's one decrease. Then we're going to knit across the row until we have four stitches left. How many stitches do I have left? Um, it's 72 minus 24. I'm clearly not very good at math on the fly. So I have 48 stitches left, I think. Watch me be wrong and then have to like correct it. But anyways, for this row, we'll have 46 stitches left. So now I have four stitches left and I'm going to knit two together and then knit two. So now I have 46 stitches and the next row I'm just gonna purl. And you can always do the thing where you do a nice neat edge where you slip stitches. I forgot to do that, I guess I could do that. Maybe I will. To create a nice even edge, I'm going to slip the first stitch purl wise and then purl the rest of the stitches. On decrease rows, I'm going to slip one knit wise, knit one, SSK. And I'm going to do this until, just by vibes, it the tapered portion measures about five inches. So if my gauge is about four rows per inch, that means I need to do 20 rows. And if every other row is decreasing by two, that means I'm gonna decrease by 20. So I should have about 28 stitches left and then that will be the end of my dog sweater. This is something where I would want to try it on Lonnie first, just to see if it's long enough or if it's getting too long. Cast off early, cast off later, just to keep on adding. If you have a particularly long dog, <laughs> like you have a little dash hound, or Lonnie kind of has a long body, I would recommend maybe spacing out your decreases. Like if you know that you have to de or add like 12 inches of length to your dog sweater, you could always alternate by doing a decrease of two stitches every fourth row and just do three rows of stock in it in between. And that just helps lengthen it and keeps like the taper going. Because it looks a little strange to have no taper and just like straight adding length. So now I'm doing the slip stitch to give it a nice neat edge. So I'm gonna slip the first stitch, knit one. This is my next decrease row. And then I'm gonna do SSK, slip, slip, slip two, knit two together, knit them together. I always just think of it as SSK. I never think about what it means, but I always think of knit two together as knit two, 
knit two together instead of KTOG. So I'm going to continue to do this until I have about 28 stitches left and then I'll cast off. But I'll do a try on before that to make sure that it's long enough for Lonnie. Okay, time for a final fitting. I think I decreased to about 26 inches or 26 stitches just because, I don't know, I felt like it. Now we're just going to see if it's long enough for Lonnie. Try to put your head through the little, little armhole, the palm hole. Okay, now the palms. Go. Last one. There we go. Okay, yeah, I think this is long enough for you. You can't see it, but it kind of goes down to like where she's sitting, so I think this is perfectly long enough. And you look nervous, but you're such a pretty girl. Okay, and then to finish it up, I am going to just cast off and stock it up. I guess I could always do like ribbing as well and then cast off. That would probably help prevent any rolling, but feeling a little lazy. Um, I can always block it after to prevent any roll after too. So I think we're just going to cast off. Oh, she just settled down. Can I cast it off while she's sitting on it? Yeah, I think I probably could. Um, Cast it off while Lonnie still has it on. Because I have access to the bottom, so I guess I can do it. She doesn't really seem to mind. Like, I don't think she loves it, but... Mm, she's such a good girl. I made it red because I think red looks really good with her coloring. Um, she also has matching red boots for the snow and like all the salt that comes with it, but she doesn't love them and she keeps on losing them. So my sister's gonna get her some new boots, but then she'll be ready for the winter. <laughs> and again, I don't really know how much Lonnie needs a sweater, but we certainly like to put sweaters on her. Okay, there we go. Now just need scissors. She just wants to know what the noise was. Let's move the yarn out of the way. Good girl. And she has her sweater. Oh, she looks so darling. Okay, I'll get a better shot of her in it in a second. And here is the final product. Lonnie is very nervous. She's a bit camera shy, but it does fit her fluff. And I think I'm gonna walk her home in this sweater and it seems to fit well. And I'm really excited to see all the different sweaters that you guys come up with. I will definitely be making my dog sweaters in the future, probably with cables, because I kind of love when a dog has a nice cable sweater, especially in the winter. I'm actually just petting the sweater and not her. Yeah, she's been a really great model. Thank you so much for watching this video. A lot of you guys asked for it after I knit my mom's dog Lilo a sweater, and she doesn't need it as much because she lives in Southern California, but also, she's still kind of a puppy, like she's on the younger side, so her double coat hasn't come in yet, so maybe she does need it. But thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions or suggestions because this was my first time like trying to formalize making a dog sweater. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and happy knitting. See ya. Say bye, Lenny. She says bye. <laughs> she's so cute. Such a good girl. And one thing that I forgot to mention is just how much yarn I used. I used about a skein and a half of the Lamb's Pride Bulky, and it fits Lonnie, who's about 25 pounds, but looks like she's about 30-ish. So I'll calculate what the estimates are. It really does depend on your dog. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this is something that I'm not going to be great at. I would imagine that it doesn't take more than three skeins of yarn for any size dog, because, again, there's no sleeve... Um, yeah. Lonnie really loves the chair now. At first she was pretty nervous being on the furniture, but I've left her alone here for like 20 minutes and she's falling asleep. Or maybe she's just so comfortable in her new sweater.